Hi there. So today I'm going to talk with you about eco refurbishing your home. So I've got some facts and figures to share with you that I picked up last night at the Green Register training session, um, which was with Dr. Peter Rickaby looking at the Every Home Counts review and Trustmark and Pass 2035. These are all terms that you may or may not be familiar with. They are um, measures and research studies and technical guidance and specifications that are being written up and developed as we speak and are going to be rolled out and implemented within the UK um, housing market um, definitely in terms of new build housing and um, quite likely are going to have impact on our existing homes as well. So um, just to let you know who I am, I'm Jane Leach. I'm a chartered architect and I am an eco home um, specialist helping homeowners who are eco conscious to refurbish their homes and extend them, redesign them and make them into much more comfortable, easier to live in homes that are beautiful and um, more, more eco efficient, energy efficient as well. So let me know below, are you planning to do any works to upgrade your home? Um, perhaps you want to reduce energy use because you um, are worried about the environment and about climate change and you want to do your bit to reduce the amount of uh, energy use at home, perhaps to heat your home. Or would you like to simply upgrade your home so that it just feels warmer and more comfortable to be there and you can enjoy being at home more? So I'd love to know, let me know in the comments below. So a few facts and figures I'm going to go through with you, which, which were fascinating. It was a great talk last night, really, really interesting and um, a lot of food for thought. So by 2050, the UK is committed to a net zero carbon, um, but no one really knows what that means. So in terms of, um, you know, our building stock, because um the amount of energy that's used to heat our buildings to light them to run them in general is a, quite a high percentage of the amount of energy that is used in the uk and so as part of the uk's commitment to um to net zero carbon we are going to have to make improvements to all of the buildings um both the buildings that are being built between now and 2050 and the existing buildings that we have because about 80% of the existing homes that we're currently living in will still be lived in by 2050. And so that means there's about 25 million homes that need to be refurbished in order for us to meet these targets or you know, the government's um, committed to these targets. So that means we are committed to these targets. So that equates to about 10,000 homes per week or about one home per minute. So that is a lot of refurbishment work that needs to be done to all of our homes to make them better. And, you know, it really will make them better. We will feel much warmer and we'll be spending less money on our fuel bills. So it is going to benefit all of us in the long term. But how we're going to get there is something that, you know, is is kind of hotly debated. And are we going to get there? Because that is a, a big challenge to um, implement that and to deliver it. So there is also a 3 million households in the UK who are in fuel poverty. And that means on average, there's about a gap of about £375 that they're not able to, uh, they don't have in order to spend on the fuel that they need to keep warm. And that's about 11% of households in the UK. So, um, it depends on where these people live. Do they live in in um, private rented accommodation? Do they live in social housing or do they live in their own homes that they own? Whether these people are going to actually be able to or be in a position to make changes to their house to make it more energy efficient and then have, um, you know, be in a better position, be able to have a warmer home in the winter where they're not having to spend 
um, so much and not being in a position where they're unable to spend as much as they need to keep their home warm. So that's one thing. The, another thing that we also need to take into account is that in the future with climate change, the chances are it's going to actually be warmer um, and certainly more freakish weather. So we don't really know what that's going to necessarily pan out like. Um, at the moment in the UK, most people are most uncomfortable in the winter when it's cold and I don't know why I'm not, I'm completely out of focus. I don't know how to do anything about that. I'm sorry if I'm really blurry and I can see the other part of the room, the opposite side of the camera. Um, so anyway, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so whether we're going to be then needing to also look at cooling techniques as well as warming techniques for our homes in the future. That is another thing that, you know, we're not, nobody really knows fully how that's going to impact us. But at the moment, the main driver is to reduce heating costs because in general, most people in the UK don't spend a lot of money or don't use a lot of energy cooling their homes because that's not a big issue here but it might become an issue in the future um, with climate change um so on average it was has been estimated that it would cost about twenty five thousand pounds to retrofit a home to at the necessary standard which like I said we don't really know exactly what that means in terms of zero carbon um, partially because about 30% of existing buildings are protected so they're listed buildings they're in conservation areas and um, they're very traditional built so they're difficult to treat anyway and um, so we may have to compensate for not being able to upgrade those buildings because and if they're protected it's because they're they're important they're significant in some way historically culturally um and so we can't upgrade them and then we in that case we may have to compensate and we might have to um, upgrade other buildings to a higher standard because we can't upgrade that 30 percent in tests and tests of case studies of refurbishment what they found is that costs have been closer actually to about ninety thousand pounds per home to get them up to the standard that they were what they were aiming for um, that might be possible to reduce that cost where you're looking at doing many properties in one go but certainly if you're looking at a one-off household and you're looking at doing your whole refurbishment yourself that maybe is 90,000 maybe something more of a reasonable sort of price to estimate for when you're looking at all the possible measures that you might want to take however it's not necessarily the case you have to do everything all at once it's possible to take um, a staged approach to upgrading your home so you wouldn't necessarily need to find that much money all in one go and you would expect there to be some payback in terms of reduced energy costs so your your cost of living going forward once you've done some of the work would be lower um so to put the the previous estimate of about twenty five thousand into context um that if it's about £25,000 on average to do a property, then in total, we would be looking at around £600 billion that we would need to spend refurbishing this 8% of the homes that are going to still be left by 2050. Um, put that into context, about £1,500 billion was spent bailing out the bankers in the crash of 2008, 2009. So it's only a third of what was spent on the banks. So, you know, you can make your own mind up about whether that's worth spending or not, and if we can afford to do it or not. But, um, you know, if, if the government was able to, or saw themselves as being able to, it is possible that the government could start to help 
householders with funding to carry out some of these measures. It's safe to assume that more of these measures are going to, more measures are going to come into force that will, that will make it, you know, a necessity that you have to carry out retrofit um, energy improvements to your home. For example, um, it may be that less efficient homes may become more difficult to sell or there's some legislation that makes them even impossible to sell without improvement. Um, and there are already signs that in the private rental market, certainly, um, landlords are having to uh, hit certain energy standards in order to continue letting out their property and that is likely to increase. Um, I, like I say, it's possible that more that some funding may become available. So the chances are there's going to be some carrots and some sticks in order to make us all start to do this work to our homes to start to retrofit it. If you are looking at extending your homes, it, there are already some councils, for example, Stockport, where you have to, those are like a very simple checklist at the moment in Stockport, but you have to start to look at what energy improvements you're going to start making to your home. And that is a, a requirement as part of your householder planning application. And then you are, you know, you have to carry that work out as part of your um, planning, you know, planning approval. So the chances are that that is going to spread and become more common across more councils at the moment. The only one I know of in Greater Manchester that does that is Stockport, but the chances are it's going to become more widespread. So these are like quite a lot of facts and figures. It was really interesting talk. I very um, much um, encourage you if you're interested in, get, in finding out more about any of this sort of thing, have a look at the Green Register. They've got a great website online, a lot of blog posts you can read if you're interested in finding out more. Also in Manchester, the Carbon Co-op is a brilliant initiative. Um, you can get involved with that as well. And let me know in the comments below, are you planning to carry out any energy improvements to your home? And if so, what are you hoping to achieve? Are you hoping to make it warmer? Are you hoping to have cheaper energy bills? Or is there something else that you're hoping to achieve through doing that work? I'd really love to know and I look forward to speaking to you next week. Bye for now. My phone is knackered. Can't get it to finish at all. Oh, come on.